I've been staying here for a little while. Seems like everything seems to be running okay so far. Alright, without further ado though, let's hopefully let's hope it stays that way. Well guys, so as you can see, we're here with a game called Dissolving. This is an indie horror game that I found on Steam. I'm not too sure how long it's going to be. But it looks quite interesting, so I thought, let's give it a go. Without further ado though, let's just kick off the show. I still visit my ex-boyfriend. He used to be a total bore, but he was cute and good-hearted. Always ready to put off his plans to help friends. Always willing to advise. He used to speak uh, passionately about programming. But before long, this good guy had to go. There was only a bore left, sitting in front of a screen. Well, <laughs> I guess that's me. <laughs> he didn't finish fourth university year, and soon he left his job in the office. His online work lasted a bit longer, but in the end, he abandoned that as well. He dwells in a decrepit flat in a bad neighborhood a generous gift from his parents. They're quite rich, so I guess it's not a problem. That's how he lives. Alone. No job, no friends, no interests. Only endless arguments with people on the net. Well, I'm not really sure if, there's any, if they're even people or not. How else can anyone be stuck there for so long? It's possible he's been desperately arguing with bots. Augmentations si uh, simulating neutral networks. All in all, I felt kind of responsibility for the situation. Some time ago, I decided to be close to him. Funny, I didn't hold on to the past, but to my decisions. The last time I was there, he was staring at his screen. Even more Langite, pale and thin than usual. Sometimes it seems that his outline was starting to blur. Just like a ghost. A rough sketch of fabric of reality. He was unusually nice when having free moment from his screen. He even gave me an envelope containing cash for my birthday which was last month. The sum was quite significant, and the best explanation from him was a shrug on the shoulders. Okay. Nothing, just my... thing. Okay. It's been over a month since then. I'm here visiting him again. The same elevator, still out of service. The same stairs. The same music in my headphones. Dim and deep, yet beautiful doom metal. A great fit for this old hall. He replied okay to my message about me visiting. I press the doorbell. It takes some strength, but the bell hasn't been used for some time. I can hear my stream playing in the background, let's pause that. Nothing. He's not home. Weird. I can't imagine him being outside. Was that him? Again? I'm coming over in two hours, okay? Yeah, come in. The door's open. Wait in the living room. Busy at ATM. What? He didn't forget how to talk, did he? There was a certain SP episode. Suddenly, I'm not keen to come inside. I pulled the handle.
The door opens. Heavily and cracking. The hall isn't lit. The doors to the living room and kitchen are open. I can see in the dark that his bedroom door, wooden with no glass parts, is shut tight. I hit the switch. I was afraid his power has been, had been cut, but the lights come on, revealing the floor covered in dust balls. Silly me. He lives online, of course he pays for the electricity. I take off my shoes and enter the living room. Silence. There's no light coming from under his bedroom door. Instantly, I reach for the switch and hit it. The fixture flickers as the lights come on. It seems I still remember where things are here. The dust is more noticeable under the light. I'm glad he doesn't have any plants. They would have withered a long time ago. Wait, I don't recall this lock on the door. It's easily seen under this light. Looks like the newest thing in here. I couldn't have entered, even if I wanted to. Somehow, I'm not too crazy about this. Sorry, not going outside. Let's talk like this. Great. Just great. I saw a situation like this in a movie. It did not end well. Fine, I'll reply. Why aren't you coming out? You won't like how I look. Don't want to frighten you. Really? Because you already failed. What's wrong? Is there something I shouldn't see? I haven't showered or had a haircut for some time. My lifestyle has an impact on my body. Flesh is weak. I can't decide if I want to run or argue. I told him the solitude would drive him mad. His messages seem to have, stole have been stolen from poorly written songs. Wait. He never listens to music. Stop. Why do you want to talk normally? Can't you move your tongue? I'm glad you came. I left you a, a gift as thanks. Alright. The white envelope on the drawer. Please take it. There's a gift and a note. I take a look at the drawer by the wall. The envelope is there. The only thing not covered in dust. Is it money again? I don't like this. Should I go? No. I want to know what's going on. Maybe there's someone else in his room. Or no one at all. It's not grounds to call the police yet. But he's been so strange the last few years. He should have easily gone mad. He could be dangerous. No. I can't leave. I can't abandon him like this. But I'll grab a knife, just in case. And try to coax him out of his room. I quietly enter the kitchen, typing a message. You didn't answer my question. Why are you being like this? His reply comes as I pick up a knife. Even the kitchen looks abandoned. I haven't spoken to anyone for some for some time. I feel uneasy. There's no going back now. I have the knife behind my back. Okay, let's do it this way. If you come out, I'll take the envelope. Deal, but take the envelope first. If you do, I'll come out. I don't want to take it, but when he comes out, he will see the envelope is still there. I could hide it somewhere, but that's risky. Gosh, just take the stupid envelope. It's just cash, that's all. I put the envelope in my bag, holding the knife in my other hand. Not very convenient. 
I have it. Fine. But don't say I didn't warn you. Well, surprise me. Hello? Fuck up. I step back. The knife falls out of my hands. I hear a mechanical voice. I told you you wouldn't like it. I start to back away. He stands there in the doorway. The longer I look, the more blurred his outline is, and the clearer his mouth and eyes are. I turn and run. As I leave the apartment, I glance back. I only see his mouth and a pair of eyes. What the fuck happened to him, man? I don't remember returning home. I must have immediately fallen asleep. That's how my body manages stress. In dreams full of anxiety, I see eyes and a mouth without a body. It was probably too much for me, because I don't normally usually dream. It's been a day since I visited my ex. Or the thing in his apartment. What was it? A prank? Did someone put on a bully, uh, silly mask with a lightning trick? Was I hallucinating? Or... Damn. I don't have much to approach this. Or what to do. I don't know how to carry on. When such things happen, I want to huddle up in the corner. This is why I tend to act impulsively, just to try and avoid anxiety. Perhaps my future actions would be judge of impulse. I used to believe that it's better to know. In these situations, it's best to start with a conversation. What happened yesterday? The answer came immediately. I'm glad you texted me. Have you opened the envelope? What a douchebag. Don't change the subject. I don't know what to say. Then think harder. Okay, what happened to your body? Why is he taking so long? This is the side effect of the... Incision? I'm not too sure to say that. The hell are you talking about? What incision? Where? I've been on a ton of arguments online. I met someone there. We started a mutual profitable partnership. I provide them with food, and in return, they help me transform and solve some issues. They will probably reach out to you too soon. They enjoyed our chat. Well then. What do you mean? What the hell? I wanted to show my gratitude. You didn't have to leave. I'm thankful for my parents too. They probably didn't care, but my family was still giving me money as support. And when they found, found me, my financial issues were solved. The envelope is the smallest thing I could give you. I wish you a good, uh, good... I don't know what that word is. Believe in the net. What the fudge? You're not leaving, are you? There was no reply. I'm talking to you. There was no reply. A couple of weeks have passed. Hello? What? How? I see. So the funeral is this Saturday, right? I will come. Goodbye. I didn't say sorry to anyone. His mother's voice was so stotic. I was afraid even a formal condolence would be inappropriate. It didn't seem like it came as any surprise to her. <laughs> now I think randomly popped up on my computer here. I 
I know how she feels. Even that prank, or whatever it was, is now easier to understand. He wanted to have some fun at the end. He decided long ago that there was nothing to lose. Left a death note and found a place to die. Just like a cat. Of course, there's a chance he ran away and the faded body found in the dump near his house was not him. But to him, suicide was the escape. He lost the ability to be around other people. Unless it's somehow related to that dull job he was referencing ever so vaguely. Ugh. Perhaps I need to pay my respects and see what he put in the envelope as a farewell. In all honesty, I put it away because it was a reminder of that creepy scene. In my mind, the story was my ex is over. I can, with no heavy emotion troubling me, delve into the mystery. That sense of complication enables me to detach. Perhaps that would even be some nostalgia. I take the envelope from the drawer. The glued, the glued paper is easy to open. As if it's been waiting for me. Some fresh $500 notes and a piece of white paper. Last time it was only money. And a considerable small sum at that. I turn the paper over. Believe in the net. There's some text on the bot in the back. And below it, a SIM card. Of course, this doesn't bode well. But what's the worst that could happen? Conveniently, I have a free slot for a SIM card. It's okay. If something bad happens to my phone, I was going to get a new one anyway. Well, I remove the SIM card from the paper and pull it into my phone. The provider the displayed is a fund. <laughs> How do you pronounce that? Could be some sort of viral marketing. Was it them he works for? I try star 100 hashtag. Weird. Nothing bad so far. Whatever then. I put the phone and money away. I go on my PC to stroll through my Twitter feed and find materials for work. Well, mostly to check Twitter. Suddenly, I receive an IM from my ex. Glad you opened the envelope. With the SIM card, the process would be much quicker. What? That's not funny. The SIM card must have triggered his final prank. A message from a dead ex-boyfriend. A sick joke. This would make for a great tweet, but that I usually avoid writing about my personal life. Nevertheless, the world needs to see this masterpiece. Just got a message from a dead ex. A sick joke. I wasn't wrong. The tweet went viral. But I forgot what kinds of people reply to tweets. That joke is stolen. Come and see. Just come and see. Such an attention whore. Picks it or didn't happen. What? Another geek girl? You're not impressing anyone, my dear. Try harder. Ugh, you're so fucking dumb. I must be femme. Nice stories about a dead ex. We live in a society. It's nothing new, but somehow this got to me. Especially... Mouth full of darts tweets? which drove me up the wall. What alternative logic led you to believe I'm a femme? Who else would joke about men dying? He must have gone completely bonkers. Several hours passed and I barely noticed. New people were joining the argument. I don't know how to pronounce any of that, I just hope all I can see is trolls. Well, what's going on with the screen? I know it was a stupid waste of time, but it really was hard to stop. Another opponent would bite the dust under cele celebrity cheers of the crowd. Is this how Gladiators felt too? 
Not sure about gladiators, but this must be what my ex felt. Perhaps people are strangers to get the slightest semblance of feeling, writing terrible insults to get the smallest reaction. A validation of their achievements. I don't like the idea of becoming that. On the other hand, you only need to take in the moderation. Online communication, whether anyone says, can help you offline. You can learn a good lessons. And it's also interesting to compare on people online in real life. And that has has only one essence, I would say. All that remains is text, the void, and intonation. Text only representation of thoughts and feelings. That's what I find interesting about it. This is turned into a face. But still, stop. What is this? Bloody hell. I jump away from the screen and unplug the PC. What the devil? That's when I catch the glimpse of my reflection. I scream, holy shit, we've turned into one of them as well. What the fuck's going on in this game? I run to the phone and take out the sim. Throw it on the floor and crush it. I put the remnants with other paper in a cup and set it on fire. It smells terrible, but I don't care. There were only ashes left. I threw them in the trash dust dugs. I get rid of my PC, along with all its data. I'll start collecting work materials from scratch on a new PC. I wanted to throw the money away, but I'd rather donate it to the church. The next day, my reflection was back to normal. A day completely offline. But after a few months, I think I'm ready to return to Twitter. I even created a new account. After everything that happened, I know this is really silly, but I miss ta uh, talking to my mut mutuals. I miss having a piece to share my mind and get feedback. In the end, I forced myself to go to the funeral. A sight as pitiful as his last years. Not sure I'm going to visit my ex's grave. Alright, there we go. So it seems like it's a very short story. It's quite an interesting one as well. A few things actually got to me. I'm not too sure if the developers are ever going to make another one like this, or try and continue on from this, but I'd like to see more of this. I actually quite really enjoyed this. But, with that being said, as you can see, this is the end. If you guys enjoyed this video, hopefully leave a like on the video, it helps me out greatly. With that being said, I'll see you all next time.